Part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. Find more great shows at greenlitpodcast.com. Alex, it's quite hot. It is, it's scorching out there. What's going on? It's June. That's all I can muster. That's me. It is. Yeah. Now, now we got to enjoy its 10 days of spring and now we're right into summer. Yeah. Sounds about the same around here. Well, I think we had more than a month, but yeah. 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 It's uh, it's not great. Uh, yeah. We've had two different heat waves this week and last. And so what? we're recording now on another heat wave day. And uh, I think, uh, oh boy. We've only been talking for like less than a minute. I think I'm ready to to get naked already. Oh God! Take off I my mean, shirt. Yeah, hey man, it's Thursday. Let's do it. <laughs> Shirtless Thursday. Yes. It's still Wednesday here though. Oh shit! Oh, you better keep that on. Yeah. <laughs> Shirts on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> the worst programming block on NBC <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> they just promote it with a picture of Jerry Seinfeld wearing a shirt. <laughs> no, they didn't. They didn't want to participate in that. It was like Blackout Thursday. Oh still no! Didn't, still didn't participate in that. Oh, Major Dad's got a tank top problem. <laughs> Wednesday at eight. So uh, how are you dealing with it? The heat. Uh, I'm sweating a lot. That's how I combat okay, the heat. Right? Yeah. Well, well that's, here, here's that's the a normal thing. thing for humans. I understand, but you know, my, other than that, right? Right around the end of winter, the batteries in the remote for my air conditioner unit uh, died, and because the <laughs> weather was starting to get warm, I was like, "I'm fine. I don't need that shit ever for the rest of my life." Yeah, and, well, that uh, sounds like you. <laughs> and now it's really hot, and I'm like, "Oh, I should have bought batteries." Right? Because I know you and your hatred of the air conditioner. Yes, because they're expensive, son. Well, you know what? Maybe you should accommodate your guests when they come over in guests, the summer. Yeah. You barely meet the qualifications for guests. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's hurtful. I still have you classified under co-worker. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> Based on what, 20 years ago? Yes. <laughs> I have your GIA dossier pitch. <laughs> <laughs> How's that Azeric review coming along? Uh, good. I gave it a one out of five, remember? Now, how's it coming along? I got a lot of hate mail from Microsoft fanboys back in 2001 because of yeah, that review. Yeah, and you still will. I still, Yes, I still do. I still check my GIA mail accounts <laughs> periodically. <laughs> They're still at it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not reviewing Brute Force, fucking asshole. No. Okay. Well, I, mm, I didn't mean really. Okay, what's your second favorite Xbox original game? Oh, you know what? Uh, it has to be Blinks the Cat. All right. Uh, it it wasn't called Blinks the Cat. So what? No, it was called Blinks the Time Sweeper. Fuck off! No, you. Uh, I can't afford a Time Sweeper. I'm right. No, you're Ray. And right. No, oh, fuck, you got me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll mine something All from right. that. Yeah, let's eat a bunch of ice cream. <laughs> That was like four different things. Hi, everybody. It's No More Whoppers and Fuck the Police. I'm Ray Barnold, proud Malwarebytes trial user, and with me, as always, the Chainmail Chancellor, Alex Fraioli. Hi, step into my office. Let's wrap about the uh, Constitution. All right, sure. Yeah. Well, you Man, know, right uh, out. What? Yeah. What's up? No, what? What? Go. I, I was going to say, like, right out of the gate, right out of the gate with uh, with the fuck the police. I was I was planning on saying something at the end of the episode because I didn't want to. No. Well, uh, come on. <laughs> things what? are going on. You can't save it till the end. No, no, things are going on, but that's that's the thing. Is like, um, I don't want this. Sh- Here's, l- I want to lay this out as clear as I possibly can after right, three cups Alex. of coffee. Hi. Uh, first of all, I'm Alex. Let's go back to 1983. A star is born. <laughs> I'm Alex. No, sorry. Yeah, this this is not. First of all, this is not a political show. But I want to reinforce that um, when I think of politics, and, and I'm paraphrasing a Paul F. Tompkins bit. When I think of politics, I think of I think the copper tax is too high. Yeah. Not uh, mm. I, I don't think these people's lives have value. That's not politics. That's basic ass human yeah, morality. Yeah. Um. That. You know, after having said that, I don't want to focus on it too much because I don't want this show is not supposed to bring people down, but there's shit going on that people cannot and should not ignore. Uh, so 
if you're out there, be safe. If you're not out there, uh, donate some money. Uh, hey, guess what? Black Lives Matter. And uh, please, you're doing some real bad shit. So um, <clears throat> do what you can do the way that you can do it. Yeah, I think things are reaching a breaking point, and uh, I wanted to mention yeah. it. I would like to add also that uh, if you uh, if you consider yourself on the right wing of anything, I at least uh, will consider you to be, by default, one of the worst humans on the planet. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, now here's Alex with this week's Final Fantasy XIV update. Uh, no, we're What's going right Nusia into light. What's in Eorzea? <laughs> Eczema. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, I, I don't want to don't want to focus on all the negative shit that's going on. You guys are aware of it. This is nothing new. You know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, do I what think, you got to do. I think also most of our listeners are cool. So, yeah, I, this is not uh, a show for uh, alt right douchebags, and I think people know that. Yeah. All yeah. right. Anyway, let's go into some more lighthearted stuff. Raymond, it's time for Alex's dream corner. I still don't oh, have brother. a theme for it. So no. instead, I'm just going to play uh, this. In the morning, in the evening, the supper time. Are you ready for dreams in the morning, <laughs> dreams in the evening, and dreams at supper time? I guess so. All right. Awesome. It really is okay. hot in here. Jesus. Yeah, it's fucking roasting. I'm, I'm dripping like a butterball turkey right now. <laughs> okay, let's get it over with. All right, here's a, here's a dream I had. Uh, folks, this is Alex's Dream Corner. I wake up groggy and I record my dreams before I forget them. Here's one now. May 22nd, 2020. Oh. I'm on an airplane flight, and I think we're going across to Canada, but I'm sitting right behind Robert Downey Jr., and I said to him, well, gosh, sir, can't we just have, can't I just get 10 hours? I want a movie that's 10 hours of you just being increasingly charming. Can I get that? <laughs> and he just laughs and says, huh, we're working on it. And then the plane stops because he has to get out, and he's got to he's got to change to a different plane. And I look out the window, and I see that the planes we've just been on the highway the whole time. It's a ground plane. Anyway, highway. thanks everybody. Yeah, it turns out it was a ground plane. Okay, yeah. I, I I have a suspicion that I think that dream is based on my first plane ride ever when I was uh, six years old. Oh yeah, with because, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, with Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> oh, yeah, back in the day. Uh, no, when my parents – when we moved from New York to Pittsburgh, we all flew down, and I did not have a window seat, so I had no idea what was going on out there. And I don't I, – I, I, guess, I guess what I thought the sensation of flying was I thought I would feel weightless, and I never did. So the whole time I just assumed the plane was on one long runway all the way to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because I didn't I – didn't I, uh. I didn't know the sensation that comes with flying. turns out there, there, isn't, there really isn't one. No, but when you're in the middle of it, it's not – too different from a car ride, so I mean, yeah, sense. I was a and I was a dumb six year old. Now yeah. I love bring on the planes, give me all, all right. the planes. I have two things. One, I took my first plane flight when I was seven, so we're pretty close there. How about that? Yeah. High five, bro. Um, number two, uh, your dream in general just reminded me that I was playing the demo of the Iron Man VR game. Oh yeah, and there is a there is a level that starts on on the plane. And then the plane gets ripped apart, and you have to be Iron Man and save the plane. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Is that is that fun? It is pretty fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think like any sort of VR game, it takes a bit of acclimation. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but it does. It has its quality. It's a lot better than some of that other. Like they had a weird like Spider Man like VR experience demo thing a year ago oh, based yeah. on the movie and it was kind of bad and I was just like ah eh, no thanks, but this one is a real ground up good from the ground up not like meat, a uh, very okay. good game. How as, as it appears how how disgusting is it to wear a VR helmet when you are head to toe dripping in sweat? Uh, well I didn't do it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> This was in a. This was when it was not as hot. Because uh, I'm, I'm wondering about that. Like, does does VR gameplay or even VR sales do they drop off when the weather is just brutally hot and folks maybe. can't afford air conditioning? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's disgusting. Uh, like, I find it disgusting even when it's <laughs> a pleasing climate. Yeah, uh, so he, I can't. I can't imagine doing it in in the dead of summer. It's important to practice proper maintenance. I always yes. wipe it down every time I'm done with it. Well, without fail. Don't Why leave are you it pointing? lying around. <laughs> 
Why are you pointing to your junk when you say all this? <laughs> that too. It's all all right. part of the process. You gotta all right. gotta get every nook and cranny. <laughs> um but yeah, it can get a little bit foggy in there, I guess. Not too yeah. bad. It all depends. Like the this is this is PlayStation VR, of course, if no one knows, but uh, I mean it's a comfortable helmet anyway, so or headset. Head mounted display. HMD. Anyway, yeah. Although that, that final game does come out, the Iron Man does come out in July, so it'll probably be even warmer. So oh get ready God. for that. Ugh. Sweat into the oldies with Robert Downey Jr. I neither want to be ready nor participate in that. <laughs> uh, well, you should try it whenever you get a chance. Yeah, in the winter, maybe. Okay. I'm just saying you'll like it. Yeah, I probably will. I, I like that Iron Man. And that's Alex's Dream Corner. Pretty good. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for enjoying Alex's Dream Corner. Um, gift shop is on the right. <laughs> Exit stage right. There's. It's just wall scrolls of me sleeping. All right. What else? Well, uh, on my side, I've been playing with my microphone again. Last time I talked about my new microphone. Right. Alex, can I get some confirmation uh, uh, from the back? Sure. Please? Yeah, sorry, I was drinking coffee. Can I just get some hoots and hollers, like, on Arsenio Hall? Jab it, jab it, kiss off, kiss off. You smell. Well, How's I'll that? take it. All right. <laughs> so, you know, last time I was doing it, and it still wasn't that great, and I still had to do some processing and stuff, so I just I went back to the drawing board a little bit, and I have the same new mic, but I just realized that I have to be more... Uh, in a in a state of eating it, you know, much closer to the mic. <laughs> okay, yeah, much more eating the mic. So yeah, the last the last couple episodes I've had to edit, I have had to do micro surgery to get your track to sound like a normal human being. Yeah, listen, we talked about it. I said I don't feel good about it at all. I feel very dumb. I'm hoping yeah. this will be a little bit better for you, and I apologize in advance if it's not. But it's fine. anyway. Uh, I, as long as I eat the mic, but also turn the gain down a bit more, we also do not have such an such of a bad experience with that buzzing power line effect that I also demonstrated last time. So I think it might actually be like legit now, maybe, or at least closer to it. Ba 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 ba. I might be a professional podcaster. How about that? Nah, I I don't think nah, so. Well, maybe by the end of the show we will be. Except I did enjoy that sound test program. Okay, thanks. Yeah, well, I, that wasn't even my equipment, so I did take advantage what? of oh. professional. <laughs> you sound really disappointed by that. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so disappointed by that. He uses his own equipment. <laughs> uh. What's wrong? Uh, I have another bit of news from my life. What's that? I'm a big manly man who did an oil change all by himself. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. How'd you do that? I, well, I bought the parts for it, and then I did it on oh, my car. okay, cool. Nice. And, yeah, I didn't feel like... Um, I knew it was easy, but I tried to uh, do it before, like years ago, and it didn't seem as easy on my car as I thought, but then I researched it again, and I was like, oh, it's actually as easy as it always has been in human <laughs> history. Um so I had to basically rebuy all the parts and supplies that I had got before because I threw them away when we moved. Oh, no. So I bought new stuff and then um, went through the process of doing that one weekend day and saved some money, I assume, in the process. Cool. You know, from going to a shop and, yeah, changed my car oil. Did you did you just look up a YouTube tutorial? Yes. Nice. Yes. And I learned about, um, oh, God, was it Jack Stan's? Who's who's that? I went to school with a jack stand. No, no. You know, like a car jack? Yeah, like when someone steals your car. Okay. There's that. But then there's like jack stands, which are like more permanent pedestals that like hold okay. it in addition to the jack itself. Oh, right. Because you don't want that thing coming down on your skull. Exactly. So it helps with that. Yeah. And uh, thank God I bought the right kind because I just, uh, I then afterward heard about some uh, jack stands from the store Harbor Freight that were recalled. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, ooh, yeah. Mm. I bought no. I bought, I bought the. Uh, I bought the good brand. So good. They they worked great. Russell Brand. Yeah. 
I see. I, I like to imagine that on your first attempt, you didn't know what to do, so you set up the jack and you got under there and you unscrew the thing and you just let the oil drain right into your mouth. Oh, um, almost. I oh, wow. almost almost fucked it up. Here's what happened. Oh, what's so up? the oil tank, the hole of it, the no, the hole on it is horizontal. Okay. So I didn't know what was going to happen when I unscrewed it fully. Uh uh oh. I was just expecting it to drip a little bit slowly. Uh, what I was not expecting was for it to completely shoot out at a far trajectory and then oh. <laughs> start creating a large puddle of oil, and then I had to quickly slide my um, oil oil canister. <laughs> oh, gross. Uh, while also, um, you know, dealing... I didn't get any end on my face or anything, but it was still not a good scene. It was basically just a regular beginner fuck-up that, you know, I thought I was going to avoid, but I didn't. Fun. And then I had to use all of the rags in the garage to clean it up. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Now I have to buy new rags. I, it, it, it feels very good, though, to do something like that on your own, right? Yeah, Doesn't for, it? For sure. Well, I, I also, before that, I changed out the stereo for, like, both of our cars. And I felt that was a more elaborate pr- procedure, really. The thing with the oil is that you mostly just have to sit there and wait for it to completely drain. Um, Gross. Unscrewing the stuff is not really that hard at all. It's just that process. So yeah, I yeah, I like I I don't dabble too much in DIY stuff. I don't like I don't know if if that counts as DIY. Uh, technically, you are DIYing that oil. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's a, there's a dude who comes into the bar who like just the other the other day just casually dropped that uh, he he uh, reupholsters his own furniture. I'm like, what the fuck? How do you what? do that? Whoa, That's okay. awesome. Yeah. Whoa. Like he he somebody gave him an old broken couch that sucked, so he just like ripped the exterior off, fixed some of the wood in the middle, reupholstered it. It looks like a brand new fucking couch. Like, how do you learn to do that? Uh, turns out, when he was a kid, his uh, stepfather taught him how to do it. So there's that. All right, thank you, father. But yeah, I, I like I would love to have a skill other than just being a jackass with a microphone. Uh, well, you're a jackass who pours drinks. That's true. Well, anybody can do that though. Okay. Like I don't yeah. even do I don't even do flair. I don't even do artisanal cocktails. I just I put liquids in a glass <laughs> and then you put the glass to your mouth. Yeah, right. And then I, I hook you up with the uh, uh, Kirby's Kirby Bowl. Fuck, what's the American name? <laughs> Kirby's Dream Course. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby's fuck bowl. Kirby <laughs> Kirby's fuck boy, yeah. No bowl. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, he, whatever. Whatever. I don't. Yeah, I don't have enough applicable skills. I think, and I, I would like uh, to. I would. I'd like. I should learn something. I want to pick something up. Are you interested in anything? Uh, well, you're trying kinda. to make that game. That's true, but that's that's kind of been put on the back burner because I have a million more important things to deal with right now, which I'm going to get to later. Okay, starting from the top, uh, number one million. Uh, okay, you know what? Here's one. Uh, working on getting this stimulus money. Oh. Yeah, so... Japan has stimulus first, money? Oh, yeah. Have I not talked about this? Uh, no. Not really. At so least I don't I, remember at all. I can apply for several stimuli. Oh. Uh, the, one that every, the one that everybody Say. in Japan gets is a flat uh, 100,000 yen. Uh, everybody can get that. You, everyone's going to get a form. You just fill it out, send it in, you get 100,000. Okay. Neat. Then there's one for uh, businesses... Uh, if you were close, here's the thing. If if you close from April 16th to May 6th, like the government told you to, you're entitled to another 500k, which is nice. All right. Whoa. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then on top of that, uh, there's another one to three million yen that small businesses or any business can get uh, if you apply. And oh, uh, any business, huh? Yes. Sounds like something mostly the big ones would get. Well, no, here's the thing. Um, when I first opened – before I opened the bar, I knew I was planning ahead because I knew I would need a visa. I was on a teaching visa and I knew that was going to ra- run out. So I'm like, uh, well, I'm going to need a business visa because I'm running a business. And I, I talked to a legal representative and he's like, yeah, you can get a business visa is pretty easy as long as you have the money and uh, a company. So you just f- f- incorporate. So I, I incorporated and I now I have this company uh, to get the visa, which I did. Alco. And, I th- and then I thought nothing of it. Yeah, Alco. Thank you. No, I like uh, Freolco better. Almerica Industries. <laughs> Freolco. And it, it turns out if Safe you are incorpor- <sighs> It turns out if you are incorporated, <laughs> you can get much more money than if you are not. So that is that uh, is helping me out or oh. will. 
I think, in the in the coming weeks or months. Quite interesting. Yeah. So, but the thing is, it's um, in order to get all this money, I also need a corporate bank account, which I did not have until recently. Because if you remember, five years ago, remember what happened when I went to the UFJ and tried to open up a corporate bank account? Um, is this the situation that involves the <laughs> Yahoo email address? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. All right. Uh, not not a Yahoo email, but a Yahoo blog. Oh, and I, even worse. Yeah. They. Um, I filled out the application. The woman said, "This looks great. We can we can open this corporate bank account for you, but there's one problem. We, uh, I don't. It, it looks like you don't have a Yahoo blog." I said, "Excuse me, what the fuck? Now uh, it's 2014. Nobody has a Yahoo blog." She said, "Yeah, well, we really like to see that you have a Yahoo blog. Uh, I, like, is is UFJ yeah. owned by Yahoo? I don't know what the fuck is going on. I, I've I have no possible comprehension of where that could even come from. And other so than like, the fact that Japan likes Yahoo." And I, I left – like I, I wasn't angry so much as I was just bewildered. Absolutely. I was baffled. I was I just baffled am. by this. I just left and I, I just forgot about it. Like I guess I'll just do the business out of my personal account. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, and then when um, COVID hit and the government said they were giving out stimulus uh, and you can get more if you have a corporate bank account. Uh, this is about a month or two ago. I'm like, oh, shit. I better go open that corporate bank account. So I went back to UFJ. <laughs> and uh, in, in 2020, it wasn't a Yahoo blog they wanted. It was uh, uh, a letter of guarantee from a prospective future customer. I, they uh, wanted me to find someone who intends to use my business in the future and have them write a letter about how they plan to do so. And I'm, I'm sitting there trying to argue. <laughs> I've, been, I've been open for five and a half years. What? The f- it's like what? yeah, I don't know is what this, the fuck the deal is. Are you? Uh, is this a scholarship? What is going I, on? <laughs> uh, and again, I was so bewildered. I just left, and then I, I told my accountant <laughs> about this, and he's just like, "It's fuck that. Come with me. Come to my office on Tuesday. There's <laughs> there's a credit union next door. They'll give you a, a corporate bank account." Okay. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I needed that I didn't have was uh, a rubber, a rectangular rubber stamp that has the business's name and address and my name on it. Right. Uh, so I, I just went to a Honko store and I, I had one made for 5,000 yen. It was real easy. Yeah, just stop in at just Honko's and yes. yeah, pick one up. Yes, it was called Hattori Honko. Wow, so it sounds like credit unions in Japan are also cool. Yes, they're pretty good. Just like in this country, much exactly. better. Exactly. This Always. country, what are you, a Phoenix Wright game? <laughs> <sighs> just enjoying these hamburgers. <laughs> the legal system in this country, but well, okay. <laughs> Well, you know, thank Los you. Angeles. <laughs> thank you for listening to my mouth. Well, you're welcome. Oh, oh yeah. My, my buddy Matt finished the, the FF7 remake. I'm going to have some thoughts about that. Why don't we do that in segment two? Not oh, quite boy. yet. Hold your horses, Ray. No, uh, yeah. Well, I am. I'm trying to hold. Whoa there, Nelly. <laughs> Heheen. That's Japanese for horse. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> coffee. I'm not, I know I can't blame everything on coffee, but I'm doing that again. You, you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I can give you a school update because I just finished spring semester. Nice. And once again, I ended with straight A's. Uh, Oh, look at this. Look at this kid. Yeah. Bewilderingly, though, because um, we had that English class that I've talked about, which was very rigid and a a bit bullshit. And I was about to be convinced that I was going to get a B because of some crap that the teacher was pulling um, in regards to MLA in-text citations. So I wrote these two big essays that were, you know, a big part of the grade. And apparently I didn't have enough in-text citations. And apparently uh, a bunch of the class was also in danger of failing because she sent a big email saying people are in danger of failing. And, you know, there's there's some plagiarism. People actually copied stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to give everyone a second chance. And I'm also going to give you the example of how these citations work. So I took that example. Because at this point, it's like, I don't know how much better I can do from what I already did because I thought I followed the material correctly. So I followed her example, and she ended up giving me the same scores, the same low scores for these papers. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is like a Don Mattingly sideburn situation, which I think you <laughs> brought up last time about something <laughs> oh, <yeah>. else. <laughs> I'm just like, what do you think these are? I did it exactly as you <laughs> said. Um but And then I sent an email to her like, hey, could I get some guidance here? Like, what exactly did you want? And, of course, she is already uh, 
uh, the reviews are already not good on her communicative ability. So oh, she right, did okay. not at all respond to that email. And so now I'm basically kind of stressed a bit, wondering, am I going to just get a B or am I just going to get a failing grade because of the severity that she oh, has God. put the lack of these citations in? Because there is such a thing as accidental plagiarism that if you yeah. don't cite everything correctly, you're basically uh, you, you, you're plagiarizing. Uh, which is some MLA horseshit, you know, academic papers, you know, the whole, you know, the whole deal. Yes. So I was a little bit freaked out about that. I thought, okay, well, I can at least deal with the B. The score is as it is. The score is not final. It's like on, it's on the, it's on the online class, like uh, content site thing. And it's not exactly as scientific as the final grade will end up. Um, but it was still like in the 80%. So it's like, yeah, okay, I might get a B. But then, uh, so that's like two or three weeks of waiting for grades to come in. And then I get them finally, uh, and I see, oh, all A's. <gasps> what the hell happened? So nice. I uh, did not, in fact, have to write out a complaint to the school about the teacher. Because <laughs> I was ready to. Even if I did get a B, I was just like, well, you know, she kind of, she kind of, I think, uh, dropped the ball as far as like talking. So <laughs> <laughs> I would have complained about her anyway. But I got the A, so fuck it. Nevertheless, uh, fuck her anyway, and the school, and, you know, the school board for uh, basically not recognizing my previous English class that I did great in years ago Yay. in community college and not getting that process going of adding that to my current record, you idiots, forcing me to take that dumb class. <sighs> so now we're heading into summer semester. Nice! What classes are you taking? This time it's art. Oh, fun. Got to get these two more general ed art classes done. And yeah, um, I'm, I've, I've been known to do well in art, at least in high school, yes. when I last did it. So we'll be smooth going on that. It's like art appreciation now, going, and art history. Are, okay, I was going to say, are you going to be doing an art or analyzing an art? So both. Nice. Okay. I like your doodles. They're pretty good. Keep okay. those coming. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure that'll get me an A, but <laughs> uh, it gets an A from me. Uh-huh. Um, um, that's about it. What were you going to ask before I started? I don't remember you went on so long. Okay, great. I, before I said summer, <laughs> you said something like, so what? Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Uh... Plot flags. Well, I got nothing. In general, any other questions? Um, how does the economy work? Um, I'm not there yet. That's probably okay, in right. uh, next next spring. We're going to find okay. out about all that. Sorry. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know, like thinking about money recently with all the stimulus stuff going on. I, I wish really I had fucking. Some. What's that? You really fucking what? <laughs> I really wish that in high school we had a class that was just called what how to do your fucking taxes. Here's yeah. what taxes are. Yeah. Here's what you need to do. like we didn't learn any of that shit. And then suddenly when you graduate and you're no longer uh, one of your you know your parents dependent, you got to do that shit on your own. You're just expected to know how to do it. Yeah, that's a real complaint. Yeah, Absolutely. young people today. I'm yelling. At, I'm, I'm yelling not not at young people. At I'm, me I'm and my children. Yeah. Okay. I'm ye yelling towards young people. Please don't ever um, talk to me and my son ever again. Too too bad. I'm gonna <laughs> like if if your high school isn't telling you uh, first of all what taxes are, second of all how to file your taxes. You need to start researching that shit on your own right now because no one is gonna tell you, and you're still expected to know, and it fucking sucks. Yeah. America's tax situation is fucked up in general, and that just makes it worse. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm positive that, uh, I did my first few years of taxes completely wrong because I never really got refunds, uh. but I was just doing like the online site for the e-filing and, and stuff, H&R Block, whatever. And it was just like, yep, I put in all I have on these pay stubs and stuff, but I don't think I was properly deducting things that I could deduct, you know, because as someone who worked at a video game website, I probably could have deducted a bit more of my video game expenses. 
Oh, yeah. And here's the other thing. I, I put out a call on Twitter the other day, uh, but nobody responded because I don't think anybody knows anything about this. But if anybody knows about filing American taxes from overseas, specifically from Japan, if anybody can recommend an online service, because there's a whole bunch that specialize in filing taxes for expats, what is the best one? I need one right now. I got to backfile yeah. some shit. And I've just been informed by our good pal, Mike Wasson, that uh, if you don't notify the IRS that you've incorporated overseas, there's like a $10,000 penalty. I don't want to fucking pay that. A lot of fun, uh, like fun times ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, you're boy. you're supposed to, you're supposed to notify the government if you file if you, if you incorporate overseas, it, like in order to discourage people from setting up shell corporations and tax havens and shit. And like I get that. Who? How am I supposed to fucking know that? How? Like I know. I'm. I, I was starting a business in Japan. Am I supposed to pour over the IRS website before I do that? Fuck off. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, so, listen. Yeah. Um, Hi. There's a site I used. This may not be helpful to you at all, based on your okay. situation. Zombocom. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zombo.com slash tax. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you got me there. Um, no, it was called Tax File with a Y. I apologize okay. on, be, on that's, their that's behalf. That's Tay File, right? Tay File. No, no. Tax File. What's up? Oh, oh, okay. Tax Feel. Um. <laughs> And basically, they just automatically set you up with a real CPA who will, like, you know, text you back and forth, essentially, on their platform. And they do all the CPA shit for you. It's not even, like, you having to do it all yourself. Okay. On, on and I was, I was thinking about this, but I, it, it's only federal income tax. Like, I don't have to file state and local, right? So I, it doesn't, it doesn't need, need to. For it. <laughs> it doesn't, because you're, you're an account, right? <laughs> Not a Nintendo mechanic. <laughs> so it's it's a. Uh, I, I don't need a CPA based in Pennsylvania, is what I'm saying. No. I, I need to file federal income taxes. No, but not I state think and local. It, it just odd. No, it matched me with some um, some woman. I think she was in Kentucky, actually. Okay. So, uh, so it didn't really matter what state. I mean, she still filed my state. <gasps> in why? Okay. Why? <laughs> why is her service not called Kentucky Fried Quicken? Okay, well, um, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just, you know, it's like an Uber type thing in that, you know, it's just people who just get on this platform to, like, earn some extra side money, but they're CPAs already. Okay. You know what I mean? So they're just expanding their skills. Okay, they got a little side hustle. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, if that, because what I'm looking at right now, I forget the name of the service, but um, they, the, their quote is it's Italian tw 1200 bucks to back file for all your shit. And I'm, I'm after like miscellaneous fees. I'm expecting that to come out to at least 1500 bucks. So if I can do better on Tay file tax, tax filet, I'm going to try that. Right. Well, again, I don't, I don't I know have, what these people, what? Yeah. I have no idea if they would even entertain, uh, an international, uh, tax situation that's like that. That's true. Yeah. But like all the laws, all the shit I need still pertains to the American tax system, American tax code. Like yeah. when I did this before, I used an, uh, an accountant in America who has either who either doesn't want to do them this time or died because I think he's old. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and he, like, when I did this, I had to I had to collect all the, the Japanese equivalent of the W two, scan them all into my computer, translate them, uh, and then like add those notes to the images and then send them off to him, and then he used those. To, he used those to compile uh, a thing for me, and that worked out okay. Wow. So is the Japanese equivalent of a W-2 just called the double two? No, it's – it. Uh, I hate you. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like – it's Gensen something something show. It's like a whole bunch of kanji in a row, and I have a shoebox full of them. All right. Is that on uh, Thursday nights? Yes, thank you. Come on down. We're doing Thursday night tax Just finals. rolling off the dad jokes here this week. I don't I like him. You're not, you're not a dad you yet. Much. You can't. You can't do this. I, I have a graying beard, so I have the spirit of one. No, that's blonde. No, it's graying. What? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. I, I, I'm in the fuck. I noticed that too when I was growing my beard out uh, throughout November, December. I was uh, getting a lot more grays, and uh, now that I, I always shave it down for the summer, so you can't see them as much. But uh, they're coming. They're coming back. They're coming, Jim. <laughs> I love being hairless. <laughs> Thank you. Have you made your decision for Christ? No. Uh, Raymond, we've had a lot of fun talking about taxes uh, and yeah. bullshit. 
Um, I'm I'm uh, sweating right now. You want to take a quick break so I can I, just uh, pour myself into a bucket? I've been sweating this entire time. Yes, please, Jesus. <laughs> All right, BRB. <laughs> Come on in. What can I get you? Sure, I've heard of Hair of the Dogcast. They're that podcast about video games and beer. From the latest gaming headlines to diving deep into the games of yesterday to sampling and reviewing craft beer from all over the world, Hair of the Dogcast is here for the gamer and beer lover in all of us. Available weekly on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Folks are back as no more whoppers. I'm Ray. That's Alex. Hi, you caught me hydrating. Well, okay. Well, well it's uh, hot. Let me. I'll take my turn hydrating. You go ahead. Good. Glug glug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We've got things to talk about. I finally finished uh, watching my dude play that FF7 remake. It does Alrighty. things. What's that? All righty. Final Fantasy. Yeah. Is it six? Seven. I said. The remake. Um, things happen. Are we? Can we talk spoilers? I think. Do people have people played it who want to play it? I, uh, yeah, we did a bit of a spoiler last time, so I okay, think good. it's been established. Okay. We're going to talk well, about it. If you don't want spoilers, just skip ahead to uh, fifty-four thirty-seven. Uh, here <laughs> we go. <laughs> <laughs> just throw out numbers. Yeah, uh, seventy-two right. eighty-five. <laughs> so here, here's the deal. Here's what I can figure out so far. Um, there seem to be two realities going on. There's a reality A. Let's call it reality A, where the All remake right. st- opens. And then 1985 a reality B, A. Thank you. And then, and then the reality B, where where like Midgar turns into a ghost transformer, and you got to fight it. You're right, but it's a ghost transformer. Only the heroes can see that. Yeah, but then um, they can't because then the bad guys see it towards the end. So you don't wait. What? Well, yeah. Doesn't Rufus like take notice of it? Rufus looks out the window of the Shinra building in reality A, because in reality B, isn't the Shinra building destroyed? Well, I didn't mean at the very end. I just meant, you know, in the in the end of that chapter before the big oh, I, boss fights and stuff. I don't, I don't know. I, th- I thought that Rufus just saw, like, the weird Sephiroth rift that he cut in space-time. I don't know. No. Sorry. Okay. Like, uh, after you escape the Shinra building and they right. start crowding around the Shinra building, like, him and... Yes. Uh, Hi, Dagger. Are looking at it like, what the fuck's oh, that's going right. on? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we got we got freaky ghosts. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> uh, um, showing up. I ain't afraid and, of no bed. Thank you. <laughs> and afraid of no sleep. And they they seem to be trying to ensure that the events of OG FF Seven play out by like correcting things. That yes, that is the prevailing uh, yeah. determination. Yes. Like, um, our, our boy Wedge survives the plate falling this time, but then, uh-oh, <laughs> ghosts shove him out a window, which is kind of a shitty death. Yeah. Because yeah. I, really mm. I really started to like Wedge <laughs> you could tell, uh, in this you version. Could, you could tell the ghosts are like, fuck, now what do we do? Uh, uh, just put him. <laughs> <laughs> just improvise. <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then you see it again when uh, Barrett dies, which I don't think anybody bought for a second. Uh, I did for a second, but then that second ended, and I was like, nah, no. <laughs> I, even though I think it's unrelated, the the, the first thing that uh, had me not believe it was as soon as Barrett dies, uh, the next, the boss that you fight is called Genova Dreamweaver. So I'm like, oh, okay, none <laughs> yeah. of this is reality-based. Yeah, true. Yeah. And then he just That's immediately comes point. back to life like, thanks, ghosts! Yeah, right. Um and yeah and that's that's where that's where that's what we got and then and then, um, you, and then you fight Genova Photoshop yes the other th- uh, my 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 dude Matt noticed this one of the other clues that there's two realities here is and and they this seems very deliberate is um the scene at the end where Zach has his standoff with uh, the Shinra boys mm-hmm. uh, from Crisis Core there's uh, a, a chip bag like floats yeah. into frame and stays there for in, a very long time. That's and it's, right. It's, yep. it's pretty. The, the dog mascot is pretty clearly a different design than the one in reality. A. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, Official also, red herring brand chips. <laughs> yes. Uh, also found out uh, from uh, Matt's girlfriend, I, that Zach's Japanese name is Zax. So right. pretty good. Yes. He's well, plural. Remember for a while there, the popular Sega mascot was Alec Kidd. That's right. <laughs> Who could forget? Yeah, well. Alex. Oh. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about things that... Um, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying people have already discussed this. So yeah, it's all the same observations. Well, that's, uh, that's the thing. Hold up. This is this is very fresh in my mind. I haven't okay. like I haven't looked up discussions. I haven't I haven't yeah, yeah, watched yeah. YouTube videos or read fan theories. This is purely my and my friends' impressions. Yeah, no, that's cool. Good. We're uh, all also, on the same page here. Biggs seems to be alive in reality B or A. Yeah, the chip bag well, reality. No, that's B. Right. Oh, but here, right. wait. Here's the thing, though. Uh, at the very end, Marlene looks at a flower and says, Dad? And of course, I go, no, it's a flower. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then we idiot. see, and then she like kind of calls out and, and then like it switches to reality B and you see Bear go, I'll be back, honey. And then um, there's also a scene where Biggs is waking up in a bed, but I'm not sure if that, which reality yeah. that's supposed to be. Like no. if that's, if that's reality A, that means he survived the plate falling I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, I think that was one other question they wanted to leave you with. Well, it worked. Um, also, uh, Biggs in the Bed, uh, great name, by the way, for a game. But that yeah. reminded me of the ending of DQ11. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Biggs, a.k.a. Cooey. Cooey, wake up, Cooey. Maybe Biggs is Loto. Hey. <laughs> Cooey, as in Hito Cooey Bako, as in Man-Eating Chest, as in Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest Eleven out now. <laughs> Uh, again, nothing. Uh, okay. Does that mean you're done talking about FF7? Um, that's all I can remember at the moment. Don't yes. don't forget. You you mentioned Marlene. Um, there's there is like a uh, strong um, suggestion. I think before that, at some point, that uh, you know she she kind of knows that Aerith might not uh, be from the same universe. Wait, what? Like, there's a suggestion that Aerith is like. Uh, what do I want to say? Like communicated to Marlene that yeah, this is uh, you know, wink, wink. <laughs> I know more than I'm letting on. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Is in in this one, Aerith seems to be getting like premonitions, right? Uh, yeah. And like putting them in people's heads. And an, an, a theory that uh, my friend Matt also had was, you know, how at the end of FF Seven, uh, like OG FF Seven, it ends um, with a shot of Aerith praying. Uh, so there's a theory now that maybe the entirety of OG FF7 was just one of her premonitions. And now she's right. kind of trying to make sure that things play out differently. I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, I think the thing I'm going with is that Aerith and Sephiroth are both like traveling through the, you know, the timelines there. And, uh, <gasps> Tripping through time. She's trying to stop him, et cetera, et cetera. Holy shit. Wait, I've got it. All right. Um, Aerith oh, is D. <laughs> what Colonel? What's a Russian uh, Ultima weapon doing here? Use <laughs> 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 Ultima weapon. <laughs> weapon. Uh, uh, how about uh, Aerith and Seth's excellent adventure? <laughs> right. Okay. Where it's it's basically Bill and Ted, but it's Aerith and Sephiroth, and they're just total dude pals. And right. They're just going through like FF Seven history, and you know. Bringing back famous people. Also, they have a they have a metal band. Yeah, called Wa Wild Chocobos. Okay. Okay. Am I hired? Uh, no. Fuck. Please leave. Okay. Bye. <laughs> uh, I'm back. All right. Well, uh, any other thoughts on on the FF Seven remake? No, I mean, um, short of doing another whole podcast about it, I think uh, we're pretty much. Uh, in agreement, everybody seems to have basically pieced together the big points of what was going on in those last couple chapters there. Um, but there's still yes. things to figure out later when the unknown journey will continue. Yeah. That was bad and grammar I, on purpose. I do find it weird that this is called Final Fantasy VII Remake and not Final Fantasy VII Remake Part One. Well, that's not marketable, silly. That kind of makes me feel like 
the next installment is going to be called Final Fantasy VII Reimagining. Final Fantasy VII Reboot. They're going to do like a Matrix thing with uh, the, the naming scheme instead of Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. Well, rest assured, it will be a very dumb title. Yeah, all right. I'm looking forward to that. All right. Cool. I, I'm not sure I trust you. Trust me. I think you're going to hear the title and you're going to be like, what the v- No, what the fuck? Uh. No, this is no. No, this is yes. Uh. Raymond, that's right. It's time for Alex's Dream Corner. Are you ready? What? What? Again? What? Yeah, man. What's, yeah. A W dose? Uh, yes. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So get ready. Here it comes. All right. Go. May 27th for 2020. Aubrey Plaza is on SNL. And she's doing a character that uh, only, she only communicates through whistling. But she also has a real annoying Valley Girl accent. So everything she says is just... And she, it loses the crowd real quick. <laughs> That's my dream. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. I think you were just watching SNL. I think I was just watching SNL. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but is that, is that a character that somebody has done before? Is Valley Girl accent, but you can only communicate through whistling? A Valley Girl whistle accent. Um, yeah. I've, I've never heard of such a thing. All right. Uh, SNL, it's yours for free. From my brain to your mouths. Go, go like, do it. Seems like a sketch that would get cut. Pretty early. What? In, oh, in the it's, production. it's one of those, uh, what, 1 a.m. sketches? No, not even that. Just oh, like, no. Not even make it to air. Uh. <laughs> Unless they wanted to get, like, really interpretive, I suppose. Which I guess they are now, because they're doing the show via video conference or whatever. I've heard, yeah, I've heard that's been weird. <laughs> Lord knows I'm not going to watch it to find out. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, well, man, oh, man. okay. Hi. I, Amazing uh, dream. Yeah. I've so I've been I don't know if I talk about this, but like I'm I, I have a uh, therapist that I talk with twice a month and he uses um, not Zoom, but it's all the same shit. He's a, a, a program called telehealth, which is basically Zoom for talking. <laughs> Wait, that's Zoom. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I, it's he's not much. He's a little bit older than us, but he's not much older than us. But it's like you have to know that you're using it wrong. <laughs> Oh, I um, know what you mean. Yeah, he's, well, he um, because he's using he's got AirPods in, and uh, <laughs> we had a we 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 had a session last week where he's talking, talking, and it it sounds like he's using the default input on his computer, and it sounds terrible. And then, like two minutes from the end, I guess the 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 Bluetooth or something or the the battery just dies on his AirPods, so he has <laughs> to take them out. And suddenly, I can hear him crystal clear, and I'm like. Hey, how come you didn't sound like that the whole time? Oh boy! Uh, it, it would really help. It would be great if um, you could, you know, because I'm, I'm, you know me, and I'm a superstar down at the Cracker Factory, and I'm a stickler for audio fidelity. And I've never known really you helps. to be a stickler for audio quality before. I was expecting you to play a drop, or I yell at you. Oh, uh, I don't have one of those. Just, just, just plain old. No. Oh, well, that works. Yeah, I, I am a stickler for audio fidelity. Um, even in just a, a regular ass routine therapy call, uh, please, please sound good. I don't, you know, it's, it's 20 fucking 20. You can do it now. You can, you can, you can I, independently mm. select your, your input and your output. So you can have the AirPods in, but you can also have your good mic going as well. Yeah. But you got to understand still so many people have no computer literacy. So something like that is just not even going to register. Like, select the input? Like, huh? Even my computer literacy is not terribly high. And, and I know I know this shit. Well, yeah, because also I, I sort of taught it and to you, you. Yes, you taught me. You! I, I am this way because of you! <laughs> I mean that in a good way. Yeah, right. I like audio. Also all that drug taking. That took them all. <laughs> Look in the bucket. Empty. I feel like, well, I think the baseline of computer literacy is going to take another generation or two before it gets good enough to where people are used to those sorts of things, like Zoom and whatnot. Yes. Um, because I think, you know, it's especially bad, and I hear this, not in my experience, but like with teachers as well, because, you know, everything's going online now with the classes. 
So you are getting a lot of teachers kind of like struggling to figure out how to do that sort of thing because it's the first time they've done it because they've been doing in-person classes the entire time. So True. It's, it's, it's going to be a generational thing, unfortunately, yeah. whether you like it or not. I feel like uh, our parents, at least my parents, were just on the cusp of not understanding smartphones, but they got there. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like my my grandparents uh, passed away a couple years apart a couple years ago, and they were in their nineties, and they they just barely missed out on email. I think they've written one or two emails oh, each uh, their right. entire lives. Um, yeah. But and but my parents got in when when smartphones started to become a thing, like right before the cutoff where they would have been too old. Oh. Well, I didn't get my mom a smartphone until like two years ago. What? She seems to be okay with it. She doesn't use it for everything. She's not, like, web browsing on it. Your mama was using a dumbass phone until 2018? A fairly dumb phone, yeah. Okay. Hi, Ray's mom. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Cumberdale. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but she took to it. Good. Now. Oh, speaking of what? Oh. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny to me. Uh, wait, what did you have to say? No, nothing. Go ahead. Speaking of video games, Raymond, I was recently gifted the video game software Animals Crossing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have much to say because I'm not far into it. Uh, I've, <laughs> I have a house now and well, here's I'm the thing, crafting. Alex. What? There's no such thing as far into it. It goes on forever. I don't understand. It tracks real time. It goes on forever. It just I loops know. forever. I'm, Ever. The only... The only... Ever. The only... An <sighs> The only Animals Crossing that I ever really got into were the GameCube version and the 3DS version. And in both cases, I found the experience uh, pretty much the same. I got super into it for about two months where I played every day and I loved it. Yeah. And then I, and then I took a break for a month and then I came back and my immediate thought was, why the fuck was I playing this? Yeah, exactly. And That's why I dropped off really quick. Like after the DS version, I was just like, yeah, yeah I can't get into this and anymore. I, I don't... I don't necessarily say that as negative criticism because two months of solid pray, play from a new game no. I don't think is that bad. But it also attracts and hooks a certain kind of person. That's true. That's just not and, us, yeah, the, I don't think. And some of the things I see online on Twitter, like, um, it's obscene how much time and effort people spend on making right. things. Like, um, I, don't, I don't want to say friend of the show. I don't think he listens. But uh, Mike, Mike Choi who um, uh, was uh, responsible for the flip grip, along with our good pal Jeremy Parrish. Um, he visited the bar last year, and uh, I saw on his Twitter, he made this gorgeous... He turned his house into a Korean restaurant, like, complete with uh, tables, a kitchen, Korean food, like, signs in Korean, a menu. Like, it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> I never want to do that. No. <laughs> it looks like so much effort... And good on you if you have the time and the effort and the patience, but that's that's beyond me. I, I acknowledge how much effort that takes, but it's beyond me. I just treat it like my own real world living space is that I'm going to make it look decent enough for me because I'm not going to have a bunch of people over. <laughs> and I still yeah, wouldn't be exactly. in Animal Crossing. Like, I'm not going to invite people over all the time. Right. You're not allowed, that's for sure. Um, oh, first of all, I want to say uh, I, I received my copy of the game from uh, our good pal Jason. Thank you, Jason. He is a lovely man. Um, I, I was excited to play it with Ruri because she was really into the 3DS version. Yeah. But uh, she set up a character, she played once, and now she started up her new job and just doesn't have time to play anymore. <laughs> right, yeah. Similar so, situation here. But th I think that might fuck me up because she is the main uh, person. She's like the founder of the island, and now I'm just like a guest who lives there, except I'm the one who plays it all the time. Does, I don't know if that's going to uh, hinder my progress in any way. It fucks up the main progress. Like all the main things that help you develop the island are only basically done by the first person who oh, fuck. starts the thing. Yeah. All right. I really want her to play, like, because it's, 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 it feels very sad to me right now, because she started up, she's living in her tent, she played for one day, I'm already in a house, I've, I mailed her a gift for the next time she plays, I don't know when or if <laughs> that's gonna happen. 
Mailbox is so, piling up. Now it's real sad. Like I, I send, I think I sent her a, a stereo or something, and it's just going to sit in her yeah. mailbox forever. Yeah. It's like, have you ever seen those like super sad posts about um, like people who haven't played Animal Crossing in yeah. like you know the GameCube version in like seventeen years, and they go back to their file, and there's a letter they they never read, and it's like from their dead mom, like that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't want that to happen. Well, I don't want no, to come I back don't. to uh, Animal Crossing in like forty years. I don't know. Or Ruri does, and then she well, <laughs> she gets a stereo from my dead ass. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. For one thing, I lost my GameCube save, so I couldn't even. Hi, folks. I know I said to skip here to avoid Final Fantasy VII remake spoilers, and while that's true, I don't want you to feel left out. Here's a brief summary of what you missed. Cosmo Canyon is revealed to be a VR simulation. Sephiroth's sword is actually two swords taped together. Chadley is canonically confirmed to be this timeline's version of Mr. Peabody from the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoon. Aerith's holy materia has been replaced with a large jawbreaker. Chocobos drive cars now. New Game Plus actually boots up Tobal number 1. Rufus is actually called M. Bison in the North American release, and M. Bison is Balrog. The Steve Buscemi DLC is way too short. If you reach Wall Market in under 20 minutes, the Honey Bee Inn is replaced with a Holiday Inn Express. Most of Cloud's mocap was done by French Stewart. Sapphire Weapon's face is actually a William Shatner Aerith mask. doesn't die because she isn't real. To get the good ending, you have to go through the Upside Down Castle. Leviathan has legs Go to playonline.com slash Final Fantasy 7 for more information. Go back to it if I wanted. So, yeah. And then I sold the game, so whatever. Oh, man. Well, uh, let's well, let's talk about it. Let's use Animal Crossing as our own uh, personal therapy. It's called... Uh, no. Tu- it's called Tuesdays <laughs> with Dobutsu no Mori. <laughs> okay, that's better. All right. Yeah, I, um, it is a game that like I did use uh, when I was in college... And had no friends to kind of have like uh, surrogate friends in fake animals. Because okay. back in college, well, back in college, uh, pretty much my only friend was you, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I, I had my buddies Matt and Brad from high school, and then I, and I fucked I guess they, up for a while, and <laughs> then I fucked up for a while. No, me. Yeah, like oh, you fucked up for a while. Speaking of therapy, I had some bad times while you were in college, and uh, <laughs> oh no, what happened? I almost jeopardized our friendship. Oh no! What happened? Oh boy, we're not going over it now. I just was <gasps> depressed and had a rough time. Remember? Oh yeah, okay, that's true. I, th- I think we all go through that. Yeah, it happens. We made it through, and we, we still yell it. at each other. Look at us! We're, yeah, we're doing a we're doing a fist bump right now. We're doing a chest bump right now. Yeah, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm in, a, I'm in a good mood today. It's great. Honestly, my my game therapy right now is the TurboGrafx 16 Mini. Oh yeah, that's uh yeah. Which I like uh, very much. I like to, you know, I I like a lot of those games. I think a lot of them um, appeal to me more than some of the Genesis games did. So I really like just playing the Bonk games, especially in some of the shooters. They really, uh, they help me cope with something. I don't know. But they're good games. <laughs> the Heat? Yeah, well, right now, yeah. What's the, what's the deal with the Game Gear Micro? Is that dumb? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Do you... You know, you heard about it. Do you know any yeah. details about it that would let you think it's dumb? Because There's I can help you out. several of them with, like, four games each? There's four of them with four games each, yes. Oh, my God. Different games. That's all you get. That's cool? Yeah. It's certainly cute, but it's also, like, the situation is it's half of you need to treat it like a toy, but also half of this is obviously for hardcore Sega fans who are going to buy all four anyway. And that's why they have yeah. two different like $300 box sets for you to buy. Okay. And then probably my, my, sell my, on eBay in 15 years. My question is, uh, I mean, I, I would be interested in one if it's as easy to just crack open and put any ROM on the SD card that you want as it is with the, like the SNES Classic, for example. Uh, well, we have no idea yet. Awesome. It seems like it might be a bit more proprietary, but of course it is a uh. USB port. I mean, as long as that oh. thing is running on Linux, like all of these other ones do, then it'll probably be not too hard. Okay. But it's a very different situation, I think, so who knows? We will find out. I like the Game Gear. Not saying I, I don't I, like the Game Gear. I never owned one, but I knew a friend who had one, and I didn't play much of it, but I will say... It did give us some good Shining Force games, right? Which uh, eventually yeah. showed up on Shining Force CD, my favorite Sega CD game of all time. And you can get the yellow Game Gear Micro, which has all the Shining Force games on it. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I, I, 
Um, so I got a Game Gear before I had a Genesis. What? And I always wanted a Genesis even before that because of Sonic, but instead I decided to go with a Game Gear and got that for Christmas, I believe. And, and it was like the Sonic pack. And that's what I got and was happy with because I loved the novelty of having that color screen, backlit, can play it under the covers. And yeah, that was fun. So I had Sonic and then uh, Super Monaco GP2 to start with. Uh, unfortunately, that's not on the micro, but Sonic 1 is, and that's pretty good. Fun! Uh, but also I think that, that the black one, the default one, has Sonic, and then Puyo Puyo 2, which is a very good game, like almost every version of it. Um, oh, yeah. So just having like a teensy little Puyo Puyo machine like that, that's pretty good. Yeah, um, my one of my regulars, my dude Josh, uh, he 3D printed me a, uh, a stand that will display five Super Famicom titles. So I decided to just uh, put on the counter the five most played Super Famicom titles in the bar and sure. uh, Super Puyo Puyo 2 definitely in there. Absolutely. It's a good one. That probably is the best version too. And Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you can do four-way multiplayer. And you, the public at home, can play it on Nintendo Switch Online. Do it! Yeah. It's on there. Nice of them to do that. Also, play Panel de Pone, which is uh, Ruri's favorite game. Yeah, that's also good. Yeah, that's what, that's one reason she's not playing Animal Crossing, is because nine times out of ten, if she's using the Switch, she's playing Panel de Pone. Works for me. Yeah. She's a keeper. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y- yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you were at her. our wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh. <laughs> uh, I heard there was, a new, there was a new version of a game called Dragon Quest. Well, let me tell you what. There's a new version of an anime called Dragon Quest as well. Oh, shit. That, well, that the counts as a version. version of a game called Dragon Quest. So they had a big revival of Dragon Quest Dino Daiboken. Seems like a bad title, but what do I know? <laughs> uh, which was originally an anime, one of the anime spinoffs of Dragon Quest. And, you know, they're bringing it back with like a Blu-ray set, but also they're making like three different games based on it. Uh huh. Apparently, varying quality. So I think two of them, or at least one of them, is mobile. Oh boy! But then they're also making a console action RPG based on it. Bah? So that should be maybe the best one. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, I forget. Ooh, do we know who's I, developing that? Uh, game Studio. Yeah, which one though? The Game Studio. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. But what's the name of the company? No, the Game Studio. What are they called? Game Studio. Which one? I'm sorry. You may be misunderstanding. It's it, uh, Game Mustagio. Oh, okay. Mustadio from Final Fantasy X. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Yeah, Dino Daiboken is an anime that um, I one time I saw on American TV at 4 a.m. when I was 10 well, years old. No, you didn't. And I. That was the other one. Which one was that? That was the other Dragon Quest anime. Um, I that? forget the exact name of it. Well, I saw one of them on, on TV super early in the morning one day, and f- I knew I knew I saw a slime. I knew what a slime was, because at that time I'd played Dragon Quest 1 through 3, and I thought it was some kind of weird fever dream for years, because nobody believed yeah. me. None of right. my friends believed me that there was a Dragon Quest cartoon, and then eventually when I found out uh, I wasn't hallucinating, I was overjoyed. Okay, this uh, so the one, they, the one they put out here is Dragon Warrior. It was called Dragon Quest Legend of the Hero Abel. That's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, with the tall, dark guy. Uh, tall, dark, and handsome. Uh, he's called Nemesis. Thank you. And then Dino Daiboken was, I believe, later. Okay. Like um, in Japan. But yeah, no, I remember reading that there were, in some magazine. They had a little blurb about the Dragon Warrior cartoon. I'm like, what the fuck? And sure enough, impossible to find, especially because I had a satellite dish TV and we never even got anything even halfway <laughs> halfway on the schedule that would make any sense so uh-huh. if i ever saw it it would have been like a promo on one of the satellite channels that ran weird promos and nothing but because it was some you know tv station's feed or whatever um so yeah i never saw a full episode of it until you know like now online yeah. or whatever uh so you can watch them all online pretty easily but i've seen a couple episodes of the die one Die. You like how I say that? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very good. I've seen a couple episodes, the first two I th- or so, a couple of years ago. I also seem to remember watching uh, episodes of Sailor Moon at 4 a.m. That was fun. 4 a.m.? Jesus Christ. What are you on? 
Pacific time? Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know. I remember be. I remember that being at like seven. No, it was. I remember it was very very dark outside. Uh, wow. So of course I, you I know, do, uh, my my story is that I would watch Mario cartoons like five a.m. Yes, because it was the East Coast time. That's right. Seems like you had a I, weird I, sort of reverse situation. I mean, also I remember in high school, um, <laughs> just I would watch the Pokemon cartoon every morning while I ate breakfast. But yeah, you know, because it, it, it was on at seven, and but I had to leave for school at like seven twenty. So Ooh. for about a year, I had seen the first two thirds of every Pokemon episode. Right. And just had no idea how any of them ended. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of liked it. It was, it was very mysterious. <laughs> Fun little thing to do. Yeah. Also, same with Dennis the Menace. Check it out. Phil Hartman's Mr. Wilson. Hilarious. Oh, brother. Uh, I don't remember that show. I, I mean, I do remember watching it. I probably didn't watch enough of it. That's one of those shows uh, where like, Not, like the, the closing cred- – if, if I hear the closing credits music, it means I'm late for school because I'm not supposed to you – know. <laughs> and even, yeah. even today, if I hear the closing credits to Dennis the Menace, it gives me incredible anxiety. Well, I – let's play it right now. No! God, I gotta go. <laughs> Bus is almost here. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson Fisk. Where's that crossover? I remember watching... Daredevil the like, Menace. Samurai Pizza Cats. Yeah, Samurai Pizza Cats was another one I used to watch in the show, summer. Yeah. Uh, after I broke a kid's leg, I would watch Samurai Pizza Cats with him every morning in the summer because I felt bad. Is this the same one you got Dragon Warrior 4 from? Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, so it's not another it. kid that you broke the leg no. of. Uh, okay. I would go to his house super early uh, in the morning in the summer, and I would just, like, go into the back door, uh, sliding glass door of the house, which kind of led into their basement, um, and we would just hang out on his couch and, and watch Samurai Pizza Cats and uh, play uh, N64 games. Wow. Yeah. Then I also have distinct memories of a morning ritual where I would eat Berry Berry Kicks and play <gasps> Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Oh, I love Berry Berry Kicks and Legend of Mystical Ninja. Yeah, which was an old game at the time, but I just liked replaying it. Yeah, and still do. How about that? Remember the uh, remember the the Nick Arcade episode where that poor girl has to collect money, but she keeps throwing her money. Oh boy, it's hard <laughs> to forget. Yeah, I know. Quite hard to forget. Uh, every generation has its own struggle. If you just didn't push the R button, you would have been fine. Yeah, and like I don't think uh, who was the host? Phil, Mike, what was his name? Phil Moore. Phil Moore, yes, um, from Act Razor? Yeah. Well, you could have made um, a reference to the Fillmore Theater in San Francisco. I was about to. Actually, that was the first thing on my mind because They Might Be Giants did a venue song for it and it was playing in yeah. my head, but I was like, no one's going to get that, so I'm going to say video game. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm surprised. I, actually, I don't know if he says, does he say anything or not? Like, um, you're throwing your money, or does he just not know slash care? Um, I don't remember exactly. Okay. He might have caught on to it. Why not? We, sh- we okay. He can't. We, he can't just grab the fucking controller and be like, "No, you." <laughs> oh, that'd be great if he did, though. That's up to us, the viewer. Once America calms down and uh, ceases to be on fire and a total shit show, let's host at the Fillmore. Let's host a Nick Arcade viewing party. It, it's just us and all the Nomowo fans. Right. Okay. I, cool. I hear you. I hear you. Good. We'll talk about it. We're going to do it. No, we'll talk about it. And then do it. There's planning has to be done. Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> uh. Yes. All right. Pretty good. Um, or Do we have anything else or do you want to take a quick break? Because we do have what? some fan fun. What? What else? What? There's nothing else. Let's take a break. Oh, man. Along with being mad at political shit, I also had to get mad at Terrace House. Oh yeah, that because uh, the uh, the woman killed herself mm-hmm. from being bullied by people who yes, um, completely I don't, overreacted to some I don't crap she keep, did on the show. I, I don't keep up with Terrace House. What was her name? Uh, uh, Hana Kimura. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I just know this was just a classic case of internet being the internet. Yeah. Uh, I guess I... Yeah. Is it worth talking about too much? It just pissed me off, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm kind of done with the show. I don't. It's up to you. It's up to you. I don't think I had a really cohesive way of talking about it, but it was just like... Uh, it, there was some episode where she had an angry outburst at uh, the guy I mentioned before who tried to be a stand-up comedian because he accidentally shrank her expensive costumes. Anyway, there was an episode where it's just like, there was an episode where it's just this prolonged tense situation with everybody in the house. And then she just starts yelling at him angrily, as anyone might be if they are fed up with someone's bullshit. Um, Yeah. A natural thing to happen, in my opinion. But for some reason... Everybody, or a lot of people anyway, uh, in Japan, and at least on the English Reddit, subreddit, were just uh, tearing her apart for saying, oh, it's her fault or other things. Just like blaming her for being mad, essentially. And uh, I guess that uh, continued on, uh, at least on the Japan side, where people would just constantly leave her negative comments uh, at every opportunity about that sort of thing. And I guess that was enough for her. Uh, and uh, she took her life. And it especially uh, sucks because she was a, by, uh, by all accounts, a successful pro wrestler. Uh, she was making it big. She she was uh, carrying on her family's legacy and had a lot ahead of her and um, just decided to end it. That's and pretty shitty. Now, before this, someone had died before on Terrace House, but it was after the show, and it was from cancer. So it's not like you know, oh. not like a super bad thing. So the last, so the first real big meaningful time that this would happen, of course, it would have to be a suicide. And uh, obviously, the show is shut down. It was already yeah. shut down because of the COVID, but this time they're just like, "Yeah, we're not gonna do this anymore." I'm just like, "Good, fucking good." Yeah. They had like a couple episodes left, and I just didn't want to watch it anymore. Yeah, I felt I felt a little bit like I was a little bit part of the problem. Not that I was like commenting on on people's stuff or anything, but it was just like just kind of watching it in general. Um, I, I liked it for more superficial reasons because you know it was a nice looking show, and it was just kind of fun to like experience what Japanese young people do in some ways. And yeah, some people acted stupid. And I would yeah, say that they're stupid. I mean, you're, you're like going to get on, that in reality TV. Yeah. It's just like, but the fact that it was such a relatively mundane reality show compared to everything else, and that a lot of articles written about on this side of the country, a lot of people sort of jerking it off for uh, about a year now. And because of that, like, it just was more amazing to me seeing a bunch of people treat it like every other reality show. Like everybody's just in it for the drama or whatever, or trying to drum up drama where there is none and criticizing people wrongly, in my opinion. So that just kind of spiraled out of control, I think. And uh, <sighs> it is what it is and it's not yeah, good. It's unfortunate. It really sucks. Uh, uh, but look out for our FF six themed reality show, Terra's house. Uh, I'm all in on that if you are. I'm not. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> Don't think that worked out. Uh, okay. Uh, too much of that train. Ugh. Oh, yeah, right. Ghost train. Phantom train. Yeah. Suplex that motherfucker. I was thinking about uh, streaming FF6 and um, uh, doing the, uh, the, the retro achievements on that site, retro achievements. <laughs> oh, boy. Of course you would. But yeah, because uh, FF6, well, it would take more than one run because I think there's some achievements that are mutually exclusive. Like one is finish the game under a certain level. One is finish the game over a certain level. <laughs> so, right. um, I mean, maybe sounds, I could do... Uh, sounds, if, still sounds up your alley. I don't see if what I the get, problem is. If I get creative with my save files, maybe I could do it in, in one run, more or less. But yeah, uh, if you want to see me stream that, let me know. Okay. Uh, you want to take a break? Yeah. Let's do it. Still sweating. Yeah, me too. To the potties? <laughs> Fans of video games, history, or video game history will definitely want to listen to Retronauts. 
Each week, Bob Mackey and myself, that's Jeremy Parrish, dive into the stories behind the greatest games of the past and the history behind the hits of today. Check us out every Monday on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Folks, we're back. It's No More Whoppers. I'm Alex. That's Ray. Uh, oh, yeah. Usually Ray says his name first, but no, now Alex does. Now, yes, we're mixing it up. It's called a remix. Oh, man. We love remixing. It's remix culture. We do. Did you play... What had a remix? Was it uh, Fighters Remix? Well, there was Puyo Puyo Su Remix to okay. Super Famicom, which is on Nintendo Switch Online, and you can play it right now with a subscription. Oh, uh, wait. Wasn't there a Virtua Fighter Remix? There was, yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. Yep, that was neat. <laughs> All right, Raymond, we have some fan fun, but before we get to the fan fun... Wait a minute. It's time again for Alex's Dream Corner. What? Are you ready for this? Yeah, man. A triple tros. A triple tros. Here we go. Mark, Mark Paul Gosler. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember I don't remember recording that. I don't know why I recorded that. Right. I just woke up and found it on my phone. It's just me groggily saying Mark Paul Gosler. Okay. So there you go. Use it for whatever well, you need it for. I think, these these I are think trying Alex, times. Alex what? is on the hype train for the reboot. Yeah. Of Saved by the Bell. Yes. Pretty good. It's on oh. it's gonna be on Peacock, I believe. Uh is that an NBC thing? Yes. I would hope so. <laughs> no, it's CBS. They're fucking they're fucking with Oh. Them. See what is CBS? Uh, all right, uh, hang on. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the fan fun theme as always. And guess what? I can't do that. Okay. Hang on. I just. I still want to. I still want to see what you think CBS stands for. Oh, it's um Char Charlie Brooker Service. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Is, is that? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. You love. You love Black Mirror, huh? I do. Yes. All righty. I I call it Kuro Kagami. <laughs> oh, can we just hurry up with the show, please? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I'm looking for the fan. Th I can't find fan th th fan fun. I can Aerith Gainsborough. I can't find fan fun. <laughs> so we're gonna do this instead. This is Puerto Rico. This is Puerto Rico, and this is fan fun. Raymond, we have got uh, uh, some donor thanks. If you will give me some music, I'm gonna have to thank a a fan who has donated some bucks. Give yourself the music. You're editing the podcast. <sighs> All right, fine. I'll just I do just do the buzzer. Fine, I'll just do it all myself. Well, that'd be nice, yeah. All right, fine. For a change. I'll do the buzzer, okay? Just All right, anyway, Ray, we've got uh, a donation from a Zip Flipster. Uh, are you ready? A Zip Disk, huh? Okay. Yes, from Zip Disk. All righty, then. Go right ahead uh, now. All right. Uh, thanks for still doing the podcast. Please treat this donation as anonymous since I don't want to make Alex spend 50 seconds talking about me. But if you guys could explain what the drop that sounds to my ears like configure neighbors actually is, I'd appreciate it. Yes, after eight years, I still cannot make out what is actually being said on that one. I don't know what you're talking about, Zip, but um, what? Uh, here's some drops that might be um, configure neighbors. Nope, not that. This? Not that. No, no, no. Nope. How about that, bro? I don't. Mitchell. What sounds like configure neighbors? Ray, what do we have that sounds like configure neighbors? Thank you you still got it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it after time's boom, up. Boom. You gotta okay. Talk. I, okay, but I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to go through my drops. and. Andy. Andy. It's not Andy. I know it's the answer, but you got to figure it out. Five I don't seconds. know what it is. I can't. I, uh, fuck. Ridiculous. Is it that one? I'm about to murder a human. <laughs> it's this one. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. God damn it. What is and configure no, neighbors? So I believe this person has brought this up before. Okay. Uh, to us or me on Twitter. So the drop in question, because they brought this up before, and I remember, I remember this, is that okay. they have no idea what this says. Configure neighbors. What is that supposed? Wait, that sounds like configure neighbors to them? If this is the same person, yes, I'm pretty sure. It is. It is. All right, say it. Let me hear that drop again. Configure neighbors. I can kind of make it out. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. You know what? I don't know. What do you think guess, it is? I guess it just rings different in someone else's ears. So, uh, I, yeah. I guess. Well, you know I, what it is. Do I? Yes. Mark Paul Gosler. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. That's off. That's a drop now. That's staying. 
And then I was like, I just like sarcastically replied, I think, with just like the URL to the show or something. That can't be no, it. No, I did not. No, I, I actually said it's no more Whoppers. I would say, hey, it would help if you specified if it's one of my drops or Ray's drops. But then I realized, oh, there's no way for fans to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, when I, you, don't, you, don't, you, know, you don't do this, but I do. When I edit, uh, I kind of make it so that I'm a little bit louder on the right channel and you're, you're a little bit louder on the left channel. Um, just to kind of give, you know, give some kind of like an audio scape, uh, I- immersion quality. Um, and I realize you don't do that. So yeah, no. folks, if, if you listen back, you might notice every, uh, odd episode, the ones that uh, I edit, you could, there's a little bit of a, you know, we're, we're kind of spread across the channels a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'm not a maniac. So if you listen hard enough, you can tell whose drops are whose. Leo. God damn it. Bare knuckle. Um, what the fuck? Configure neighbors. What could that be? Oh, it's this one. Maybe. Respond. Snake. Alex, we already Snake. already brought it up. It cannot be. No, that's very clearly no more whoppers. Maybe it's another. It could be just a different person who is also confused because this this. I got the original question like uh, four years ago from one of our uh, frequent fans. And then I explained to it, not even, not even too sarcastically. I just said, it says no more Whoppers. And then they said, I figured it was that, but the way it sounds kind of made it hard to make out. So maybe this is a different person. I refuse to believe it's that one. Jason Ariola. I'm I'm going through my drops here. I can't. Bellingham, Washington. Imagine. We we did it. It's. We didn't do it. No, it's not. It's. uh, All right. That does not in any way sound like configure neighbors. Configure neighbors. No, <laughs> see? It's not, not, not at all. Uh, pretty close, I gotta say. That might no. be it. Look that at might be the one. <laughs> Alex, what's going on? Is, is that one? Hey, wait a minute. Maybe what? it is this one. <laughs> that is Italian for configure neighbors. <laughs> well, what is that, like Italian coffee? Yeah. Yeah, language is coffee. <laughs> yeah, and you drink it up quite a lot on this show, don't you? Yes. Oh. That's a shame. What was I, what was that? That's a shame. Oh, it sounded like fuck him. See, I can't hear drops either. <laughs> uh, You're an alcoholic. Shut up, I, Ray. <laughs> All right, Mata Orenji no Koto Ray. That's it for fan fun. Thank you for indulging uh, me. I think we have one more piece of business. Yeah, do we? Yeah. Fan fun's over. The fan fun's over. All right. Well, let's hit it up. We got some All big right. news, folks. We do. We're doing this. That's right. No more whoppers is, as of this recording, <gasps> launching a Patreon campaign. I really do like pasta. Okay, that was. Really, not oh, what sorry, the kind of celebratory I, I drop apologize. I was looking for. Okay, how or about anything like that? Steve! <sighs> I guess I'll take it. Yes, Patreon, patreoncom slash no more whoppers. Can you believe it? I can. I I have to confirm that that's the actual address. But uh, yeah, we decided to just set it up because no one demanded it. But we thought, at least my prevailing thought was because so many of our fans, I think, listen to most of the same shows from our friends and such. Yes. That they could probably, you know, stand to have a more convenient way to give us money as well as them. That is true. So having it all under one roof, I think, might be helpful to some people. So it is an alternative, alternate, whichever word you you, you like better, way to donate to us. We'll still have that PayPal button up on the site, but by all means, go ahead and switch from that to Patreon if you want. And that is essentially it. Like, we're not going too crazy with it, especially well, with all hi. the, you know, especially this week with all the political things going on that, you know, people get oppressed <laughs> Once again, and such. not political, but I hear no, where you're coming from. You know what I mean, because I say it in this voice. Oh, well, they're um, talking out of the side of your mouth. You know, we're not we're not here to, uh, you know, uh, have, have bells on about it or anything. So it's just... A thing where you can give us money, and we have a p- tier where we're going to try and give you an early link to the episodes as early as possible before they go up. That seems to be the 
best, most efficient way we can pull this off without driving ourselves crazy, trying to like provide, you know, new content or exclusive content, because that's not really what we want to do yet. And we just kind of want to make it simple again to just donate as people uh, have already. However, we did set up a goal. We did set up a pretty cool goal, uh, you know, for a couple hundred smackers. Uh, we will try and set up Honest to God live streaming. Yes. Maybe right before this podcast goes up or right after, who really knows. But either way, it's just a thing where, you know, we kind of threatened to do this before. Yeah. And we just kind of want to do streams together and, uh, you know, play some games for a couple hours. That's you know, right. Check weekends. it out. You want to see us play through Pocky and Rocky? We'll do it. Journey At- to Silius, I'll watch Ray do it. Sure, yeah. And it would be like that. It would probably be us watching the other do it while the other one, you know, because we don't know how to set shit up. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Didn't it like seems like it would be a real hassle to try to get us to do co op. Uh yeah, under certain circumstances, yeah. But there's also a hassle in getting it set up for broadcasting anyway. So we need Available at Walgreens. Oh, sorry. We need some gear for that. Alex, at least, needs a Windows computer of some sort. I do. I, I've been saying that if, if my stimulus uh, comes through, I want to try to upgrade my computer. But um, well, the Patreon I, can make that happen sooner. <laughs> yeah, but I think also uh, just having like a dedicated sort of streaming laptop thing set off to the side that's also fairly inexpensive uh, would be good for you. And um, Yes. I think I have to get a couple of things as well but i'm mostly set up um i don't know if i mentioned this last episode but i i did i managed to get my capture card working on my work mac um but only with the ps4 and it records at you know about a frame per second so that's not ideal no i i would like a dedicated machine just for streaming and recording in high def and not necessarily for playing games although i can't imagine the specs would have to be too much too different um, but yeah, I, I would like to participate in this new age of streaming and I'd like to do it with Ray and we'd like you to help us make it happen. Yeah. So that, that's about it. Again, we're trying to keep it simple. Just plain old stuff. We're not relaunching anything. We're not relaunching ourselves. Yeah. We're not going for a big, huge campaign or anything. It's just, we're on Patreon now. You can give us money the same way as always. Yes. Let's try to do some streams. If we get a bit more money, that's about it. Any other, any other comments, Alex? Um, what do we have so far? We got two tiers on the Patreon? Oh, yes, of course. The tiers are, of course, for $1 a month, I believe, you can uh, join the gold subscribers. And that's about it. Okay, cool. <laughs> but we have uh, a new tier. Alex, you want to introduce it? Uh, it's called Golder Subscribers. That's it's, was right. It, was it five bucks? Five. We went with five. Cool. You got a fiver? Float us a fiver every month. We're going to help you have fun. And that's the one where we get the uh, early episode. Um, uh, yes. Oh, wait. I want to get some other things out of the way real quick as well. Um, if you are still – if if you don't want to do Patreon, you still want to do PayPal, you can do that. Uh, yeah, there are I still some folks – Yeah. Well, let's establish this. There are still okay. some folks who are sending uh, PayPal um, recurring donations to me and not to No More Whoppers. Oh, yeah. Please cancel the ones going to my email. Please make sure they are going to no more whoppers at gmail.com because we did and, just change that up. What? Well, the easy way to do that is just cancel it on PayPal, but then go back to our website and just yes. click the button again, which has yeah. the new URL that we're now using for PayPal. Yes. And you know what? Uh, if you're canceling the old PayPal, why not just uh, float on over to that Patreon? Exactly. You can, you can still contribute and you can help us reach our goals yeah. and we'll stream for you. Don't be old men like us stuck on PayPal. Yes. We've been doing it long enough. Look how cranky I am. Sure. Yeah. Look at us joining the modern web. <laughs> I, yeah, I just uh, I just signed up for a Reddit. <laughs> I got a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> the government's going to start sending me a Reddit stimulus. All right. Well, I think that's, that's about fine. it for that part. Patreon is a thing yes. for us. How about uh, that? Yeah, that's yeah. We're we're coming up in the world. So along with if you're uh, given to Retronauts or Talking Simpsons or Doughboys or something like that, Cartoons One Hundred and One. Now you can. What? Oh yeah. <laughs> 
the deep end. Yeah, the uh, the, the, the duck guy. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, wait, not the other duck guy. There's too many duck guys. Well, there's Bob. You like yeah. Duck Man? Yeah. You're saying there's another duck guy? Yes, yeah, uh, Mike J or whatever the fuck. Oh, oh, that's right. He likes yeah. Flynn Glomgold. Yes, yeah, Glomgold. Oh, key donkey uh, doodle. Yeah, it's on Patreon. Thanks. <laughs> Folks, don't forget to check out uh, 14 and 14 also on Patreon. That's oh. It still exists. Uh, and uh, the series has actually been uh, picking up a little bit of steam. I've actually been better about promoting it on my FF14 discords, and people seem to like it, which is nice. Oh, really? Neat. And uh, it's getting good, it's getting good now. I'm, I'm, uh, I've said, said this for the past three fucking episodes, but um, I want to reinforce that uh, I've got – I think I've uh, gotten into a groove. I've gotten the hang of the show. It's a lot of fun. I've cut a lot of the fat. Come on in for just some fast fun. Food folks and fun, once again, that's what I'm all about uh, in the right. world of Eorzea. Come on in. Ha- pour, well, yourself, pour yourself a glass of Chocobo juice. What's going on? I've watched an episode or two, and I have just one complaint. What's up? I don't like Italians. That's not going away. Shit. Sorry. Guess what? Uh, Greece lives matter. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be representing. Uh, shouldn't lie too people. hard. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. You know what? My, why don't I just set up a separate personal Patreon as well? Everybody's got a Patreon. Patreon for plosives on my pipe oh, yeah. phone. Yeah, that's a problem I've run into in 14 to 14 is um, I'm using a, a Yeti a blue mic. Uh, I do blue not have Yeti. A, a blue Yeti. I do not have a pop filter on that thing. And uh, I'm, I'm in a part of the game where uh, there's a fantasy pope running around doing fantasy pope pranks. That's a lot of plosive peas, and it's not yeah. good. So I'm really hoping I kill this pope soon. You do what I do and uh, got a new gooseneck for my microphone. Ooh. So that when we do do streaming, <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> sure. I can just... Are you done? Yes. I can just turn the chair around and... Put the microphone somewhere else in front of my face rather than in the corner here where I'm doing the podcast right now. What I'm saying is I can go and look at the TV and play a game while streaming instead oh, of fun. just in podcast mode. Yeah, you know? I've been I have been watching a lot more streamers lately uh, at work. So I, I, I'm I a fan of a, there's a guy who comes to the bar. His name's Sebastian. You can follow him on Twitch. I think his handle is a Taurinensis. Good luck spelling that. <laughs> um, it is T A U R I N E N S I S. Uh, he raises money for uh, Alzheimer's research, the Alzheimer's Society of the UK. Uh, and he went to school, I believe. He's friends with a guy called Chinese Hulk. I think there's an underscore in there. His streams are really cool, and his retro streams are kind of uh, motivating me to want to stream retro stuff. Uh, it's kind of why I was talking about FF6 earlier. So if anybody has right. uh, anything they want to see me play or any recommendations for getting started doing retro streams, please let me know. I, I don't think I want to go with a camera. I think I want to go mic only because um, my mic is huge and it's covering my face most of the time. Well, I think when we do it together, a camera might be helpful. Well, yeah, for us, I guess. Okay, okay. But for my own stuff, I prefer not to use a camera. Fair um, enough. Because the, the, the kind of streams I don't like are the ones where... Uh, there's a lot of focus on the camera, and there's a lot of focus on the guy just, like, mugging and reacting to the camera instead of actually being interesting with his commentary. Yeah, a lot of people don't get it, but... Yeah, uh, yeah um, just, I prefer... Uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's why I, I prefer audio only. Um, I can focus on what you're playing, and I don't have to look at you making goofy-ass faces. No. Yeah. Or just being a goof. Being a goof. Okay. Cool, cool. We have promoted ourselves sufficiently, I believe. Oh, yeah, did I talk about my, my voice <laughs> shit? Oh, my God, that's right. We didn't really yeah. catch up with that at all. That's, hey, guess what, Ray? The episode's still going on, you dumb fuck. Hey, I know. <laughs> Sorry, I love you. Hey. What's I, up? Hi. All right, so I had my first uh, voice recording gig. I, I'll, I'll only use the term gig because I went into a studio. Yeah. Um, it was a recording for a uh, Juku. Oh, yeah, that's right. I wanted to make this into a segment real quick. Oh, boy. The Juku yeah. segment? Yeah, hang on a sec. Alex's Juku segment. Single female lawyer. <laughs> All right, so Raymond, we're going to play a little game here. I'm going to read uh, my half of the dialogue from the things I had to record, and you're going to have to improvise some responses to me. I believe this is an improv game they've done on Freedom before, which I quite enjoy. Uh, would you like to participate with me? Oh, uh, I'm a bit scared. Awesome. Because you know I'm not great with the improv. Uh, you'll do fine. 
So yeah, okay. I went into I went into the studio to record uh, some English dialogue for a Juku listening test. Juku is a Japanese cram school that, for some reason, kids uh, and their parents feel they need to go to. Oh, the, kid, right. the parents okay. force the kids. That's um, right. It's it's a, it's kind of a from, from from what I know from my friends and students I've had. It's it's a, p- a pretty big cause of a, a teenage burnout in Japan. Is just mm-hmm. going to these fucking cram schools all the time. But you know what? Uh, I recorded some dialogue for a listening CD in English for them. Uh, I'm going to read my half of the dialogue. Raymond, I'd like you to react. Are you ready? All right. I have one question about that, though. What's up? Do you also have to cram your voice? Like, do you have to do it fast? No, why would I have to do it fast? I'm not dubbing a video game. Because it's a cram school. (laughs) Not yet. Is that that what you're talking about? (laughs) No, I was just making a joke about cram school. Oh, God damn it. I'm going to tell, tell you where to cram it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's begin. All right, here we go. Wow, what a day. Uh, uh, yeah, sure has been. Maybe on the kitchen table or by the toaster? Oh, no, I was thinking more on the veranda. Oh, I didn't put it back. Well, what do you mean? Well, you, it was right there. What did you think of the drawing contest? Oh, it was okay. I thought Alan really did a messy job on on the last part of it. But otherwise, you know, it turned out well. Right. I thought Ayako had a good chance. Yeah, but she didn't really draw Sonic's penis all that great. It was uh, missing a lot of the uh, shine marks. Hey, where's my file? I saved something on this computer yesterday, but it's gone. Well, did you check the recycle bin, you dope? Why? Well, that's where a lot of the deleted files go before they're permanently deleted. And on Windows, it will usually keep them around for about 30 days, so check it out. My file was not junk. It was my final report. Well, again, just open the recycle bin. Just double-click and see if it's there. What is your oral presentation topic? Uh, papayas. Remember, the teacher said we should talk about something historical. Yeah, the history of papayas. It's like blood money in a way. Well... It's like the banana stuff. It's really quite a, quite a bloody history. Well, I doubt you'll accept it. It's too recent. Well, I mean, it's more of a timeless thing. I mean, it's been going on for decades. I mean, papayas have been around on the island nations for quite a while as well. So there's a lot of history. You're taking a chance. Well, I have confidence in my uh, work and my skills. You know, I'm already a straight-A student. How could it go wrong from here? I didn't see you at the meeting last night. Yeah, I had a thing. I was playing Xenoblade. Well, you didn't miss much. No, I didn't think so. (laughs) What did... Oh, man. Did Jerry get up to some shenanigans? Really? No, did he? No, it seems fine. Okay. Uh, you don't have to call him it. Hmm, I don't know. I did what you told me to do. No, no, I told you to respect Jerry. I was just kind of ribbon, ribbon him, that's all. Just some good-natured ribbon. I... <laughs> I put 40 grams of coffee for each cup. Yeah, well, uh, good work. Um, I guess that's why you're so testy on the show. Yes, for 30 minutes. Where have you been? Boy, this is turned into the classic Alex right now, isn't it, buddy? I've been calling your phone, but I couldn't get through. Well, that's weird. Well, I guess the battery is low, actually, right now. Are you near the lions? Um, no. No, those are doves. Not in the insect house, I hope. No, no, the dove house. <laughs> Just like last month. We fixed so many PCs through March. Yeah, those doves were a great help, weren't they? I'm glad we've recovered from January. Uh, yeah, but no, we have to recover from uh, February, March, April, and May. I was surprised to see such a tree here. Yeah, that's an anus tree. No, the leaves had five parts, like fingers. Oh, okay. Well, they probably went inside the anus tree. (sighs) Would you like some coffee? Uh, yes, please, green. How about some water, then? Well, yeah, you gotta make coffee with water. It's a liquid. If you're looking for speed, the Speedster X is for you. It's the lightest running shoe with a thick sole. It feels a little bit tight on wide feet, but that's because so little material is used. No, that's okay. I'm just here for meth. Come join Max Fitness. All right. It's, it's just a, a ads okay. from here on out. But uh, thank you. Thank you for All participating right. in my little All experiment. All right. How about that? It kind of worked out. And yeah. Pretty good. I'm the wind. Yeah. So that was my uh, recording experience, um, and the I, they contacted me about doing an, another job, which they said was just for a, a technical manual or like a technical demonstration. I don't, don't know what that means. Maybe like a training video. Oh, I have maybe no you have idea. to do line by line uh, code. Oh no! If parentheses, Alex, comma uh, happy uh, parentheses semicolon. Then, 
squiggle bracket, line break, Alex dot, yell, parentheses, parentheses, semicolon. Pretty good. Um, but then I was I was contacted and informed that that has been postponed. But Aww. instead, I'm going to be doing another recording for the same Juku. I don't know what they want, but uh, that's a two day recording this time, so maybe a bit more. Wow, two days in the studio, huh? They did. Re- I don't know if this was them being genuine or if this was just um, Japanese over politeness. But when I left, they said uh, I did such a good job. They wish they had uh, gotten me to read f- more yeah. parts instead of just a few that they gave. Oh me. man. Very Jozu, huh? No, I just I I just talk into a mic. Yeah, you're you're killing it. Well, we're gonna see. Uh, but the 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 downside here is uh, because it's freelance work. Uh, if I get paid, it's gonna be in two months. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, uh, well, you and I are no stranger to freelance. Uh, no, answer me this though. Hi. So, did they turn out to be uh, somewhat? Uh, creepy or did you get suspicious at any point or, or you know no, I, I, it seems on the up and up All right. um I, I yeah I met, I met the woman who i had been talking to through email who was an actual woman All right um, that's good. Was, good start she was very nice um yeah i met her at the studio she took me upstairs and we met the juku folks and then i went i went into a separate booth and they went into a bigger room and there was a recording light and you got to obey that light oh boy i bet boy maybe we should get one of those yeah, it was fine. It was fun. It was good. I'm looking forward to doing it again. All right. Folks, hire me for voice shit. I'll do it. Um, first job's free. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is here. Alex, give me your last name. Pronounce it for me. Fresno. All right. Well, we're doing a sound check. You can get it right later. Sure. All right. Well, best okay. of luck. Best of luck with your Thank gigs, you. bro. Thanks. Maybe you'll get some uh, groupies. That oh, that would be great. Freo lights? That no, sounds maybe, more like a sect. Maybe you'll be one of those famous voice actors and you can play D&D together on Twitch. I refuse to do that. The last thing I want to do is play D&D on Twitch. All right. Well, good enough, I guess. Oh, you know what, though? Like The whole COVID thing has really reinforced and sort of driven home the fact that a lot of very talented and very successful actors and voice actors don't seem to have a good home mic. <laughs> yes. I was, I mean, I, I noticed this a couple years ago. If you remember a couple years ago, um, Cam Clark and David Hayter did a cute uh, reading of Night Before Christmas uh, in character as Liquid and Solid Snake. Right. And um, it was, I thought it was very cute, except it's the worst possible. It's, they may as well have used a talk boy. It sounds yeah. real bad. And, like, it's not just the bad quality mic, it's the shitty acoustics. Like, I think it's, like, in Cam Clark's kitchen or something. I swear to God, if you're famous or if you're, like, a CEO and your company is fucking bankrolled by the Chinese, just get the best goddamn microphone you can. Yeah. (laughs) And use it on your friggin' webcam. Like, it's it's baffling to see professional voice actors who don't have a proper mic at home. Um, uh, props to Jason Manzukis, who has one. He was, uh, I wanted to do a little roundup of podcasts I've been listening to. I've been listening to, uh, Scaredy Cats recently. Uh, he's got a good mic. Sounded like he was in the studio. Um, some wow. folks do not have a good mic. I, there was, um, a couple of comedy bang bangs. I listened to like the first half hour and I'm like, I just can't, I just, I can't listen to the rest of this because the mic quality was so bad, uh, or the delay was so bad. It fucked up all the comedic timing. It's just, yeah, it's absurd. Just like. Yeah. To, whatever computer you're on, whatever it included <laughs> for a camera and microphone is not yeah. good. Yeah, this is this is a period end of story. You have to get a new microphone and or interface and or mixer. Yeah, this is this is a blanket uh basic ass tip for anybody who wants to do anything online with audio and video. Do not ever ever use your default built-in shit. It yeah. looks and sounds terrible. Plus, what do you think I've been doing with this new microphone? This is a bit part of the uh, sort of related to the quarantine in a way because I was just like, yeah, I saw other people complaining about celebrities. And I'm like, OK, now's the time for me to get up on the up and up to borrow a phrase Alex just used. Yeah. And so here we are. Hopefully, hopefully we're doing better. 
I tweaked my mixer settings before we started recording, and I'm going to feel like a real horse's ass if uh, I'm peaking or I sound bad, because I'm railing against people who don't know how to do this, and maybe I don't know how to do this, so... Um, and and I, I say get a good camera. I don't know about that. I've never really used my camera for anything, so... I, yeah, I don't even care so much about the camera. I don't care if you're in 480i or whatever. Yeah, the camera's not the issue. It's more it's more the audio thing. Just yeah. If you're doing anything in any quasi-professional capacity, please, please, at least have a mid-range mic. Yeah. This one was like 20 bucks. Don't sound like it's your very first podcast and you're recording into a tin can. <laughs> Unless that's your whole gimmick. I mean, you do you, I'm, man. Yeah, people, it's a, there's a lot of people who go on podcasts yet um, are not really aware of how they're made or what goes on or what com, uh, equipment they yeah. use. And a lot of people who also still go on podcasts and ask, can I swear on here? Oh, my God. Yeah, that question all the time. So I told the guy, to, wait, wait, can I swear on here? Yes. Okay, so I told the guy he's a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> I swore on here uh. because, you know, I have to go on the uh, the comedy podcast with all my comedy friends who, uh, you know, often are swearing a lot on their comedy program, which I apparently have never listened to at all. And I need to make sure that I can swear on the freely available Internet recording of the program we're doing. OK, are you done? And yeah, okay. Awesome. Sorry, I got off on a tangent. I want to do a quick, uh, quick podcast roundup. Because uh, I've been l- looking for more shows. The more FF14 I play, the more podcasts I listen to, and I've kind of uh, used up my backlog. There's a fascinating podcast called Wind of Change. Uh, folks may have already heard it. Um, I think it, the whole thing is already out on Spotify, but it's coming out uh, weekly on regular ass podcasts. I don't fuck with Spotify, so I don't know. Yeah, what? What? Okay, whatever. Uh, it's really interesting. It's about this uh, apocryphal uh, Cold War story about uh, the Scorpions and one of their famous songs and them doing CIA work in Russia. Uh, check it out. It's interesting if you like uh, history and all the fucked up shit the U.S. has ever done. Um, I also, oh yeah, uh, I want to rec- re- recommend one episode of a podcast. Um, are you, you're familiar with Reply All? Yeah. Reply All is a show that seems to do a lot of different stuff. I don't know what it wants to do. Episode 158, our pal Jason recommended it to me. Uh, just go listen to Reply All episode 158. Um, oh it's yeah, a- I know what about, you're about. about a pop song. That a guy remembers that does not seem to have existed, and they track the shit down, and it's fascinating. Every other episode of that, uh, really hit or miss. <laughs> uh, it's it's one of those yeah, shows. Yeah. It's one of those shows where if you listen to enough of them, it just sounds like a parody of itself. It sounds like uh, Radio yes. Lab, like one of those. Yeah, that goes for most of those Gimlet shows. To be honest, yeah, a lot a of those shows after a while sound like they're just supposed to be parodying uh, Radio Lab type. Um, stories and there's like there's there's a certain thing that those shows do where they try to make everything sound poignant and meaningful and it gets real old yeah I was fuck I was listening to one where the guy's like he has some info that he's supposed to look at and and talk about for the podcast and he's like I knew where the documents were they were in a binder the binder (laughs) was in my coffee table it was in my living room it was blue unassuming a regular size binder like shut up just read the fucking I don't care yeah, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, sorry, I'm not yelling at you. I just that's a format that really grates on me. It's also you're you don't need to sound so fucking twee every goddamn second. Just do the thing. Hi, it sounds like that Portlandia sketch. Yeah, Reply All is kind of a Portlandia sketch. Hmm. I don't know. That's not true. They do good work. Uh, I just don't like all of it. All right. Well, you can flip flop about it all you want. Let's go ahead and uh, in the show now. I'm not. Hey, Raymond. I'm not done. Oh, uh, this last thing is very important. I started listening to a podcast called Missing in Alaska, and uh, it sounded the premise sounded very interesting to me. And then I listened to one episode and it completely lost me because there's um, there's I don't know. I, yeah, maybe I'll talk about this next time. Is it about Chris McCandless? Who? OK, guess not. No, it's about a politician. It's about like a, a Democrat congressman who goes missing in Canada after a plane crash. And like that kind oh. of thing interests me. Uh, like, oh, there's a mystery. There's an investigation. Like, let's find out where this goes. And it's, it's the driest. It, I don't know. I, it's, there are there are some folks who can do podcasts like that. They have a way of speaking that makes it engaging. The guy who does this one is is kind of monotone and just it just sounds like he's reading the facts. 
But then he got on the plane, and the plane took off, oh, no. and then the plane disappeared. That's a yeah. shame. It was, it was very much uh, similar to uh, The Trail Went Cold, the other show that I was talking about, like, months and months, like, last year. Uh-huh. Which, like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not shitting on those guys. Um, they're fine, and they, they put out interesting information, but, like, there's a way to engage, and there's a way to speak that, that is interesting, and it's something you have to learn, and I'm still learning it, uh, and I, yeah. <laughs> I really wish other people would. Yes! You can't you can't just sit down and read a text document. It puts me to sleep. You have to talk like you're a human being. You have to talk like you're conveying something. You have to talk like you have emotion. Ah, uh, yeah, but also uh, uh, watch out for your vocal tics. Like say yes. uh before you uh, say watch out for your vocal tics. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. All right, now I'm done. Sorry, I don't mean to be shitting on podcasts. I love podcasts. Those are just some of my my pet peeves. My pets peeve. Raymond, can we close it out? My God, yes. I'm so sweaty. It is Folks, hot. It is the end of the show now. Please go to our website, nomorewhoppers.tumblr.com is where you can find our donate button. But now, as we discussed, we are also on Patreon. Patreon.com slash nomorewhoppers. Join our two tiers. You can be a gold subscriber or a golder subscriber and get an episode early, probably. We'll try our best. Yeah. It's not going to be like an exclusive feed, but we're just going to like, I think right now just give a link because we can do that we can give links before it's published publicly we can and will do that uh we'll figure it out anyway we're also yeah i think um hang on the the thing that's important i'm trying to trying to elaborate on what you just said the thing that's important to realize about that episode in advance thing is that uh, our, our show is edited on a very helter-skelter schedule. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, today we're recording for Ray. It's Wednesday night. For me, it's Thursday afternoon. Uh, I'm going to start editing this tonight. The finished thing might be ready tonight. It might be ready Japanese Friday. It, I, maybe I have other things to do. It might be done Saturday. It gets done when it gets done, but it will be uploaded before Sunday when it usually drops is what we're saying. Right. Sunday at midnight Pacific. How far ahead that is is yeah. uh, undetermined. So, yeah. Like I said, we're doing it loosey-goosey. But we yes. hope you uh, approve of our endeavor. <laughs> Please do! And we're also on Facebook. Facebook.com slash No More Whoppers is where you can like us and probably be part of the Facebook like segment where Alex just, you know, rolls off your name and... That's right! It's funny. Because Alex is funny. Uh, shut up. Oh, well, we're also on Twitter as No More Whoppers, of course. And that's where you can find some crap sometimes about the show. And Alex is on Twitter as... Hi, I'm Pitui. That's P-I-T-O-H-U-I. Please also follow my bar business at Critical Hit Nag. And the Out of Context Quotes accounts at O-O-C-C-H-Q. I tweet funny things I overhear while I'm at work. And uh, please check me out on YouTube. Uh, Hooded Patui, all one word. Uh, watch 14 and 14. It's fun and I have fun doing it. I realize not a lot of people watch it. Uh, people are More people are slowly watching it. But uh, it's, it would mean a lot if you would watch it. It's just me being a goof, playing FF14, uh, cutting the fat. Condensing episodes down into delicious 14-minute chunklets. Come on in, have a bite, sit down with me. Let's play FF14. That's my stuff. Look at this guy. He's a regular Renaissance man. He's got a podcast. He's got another podcast. I'm Ray. I'm Ray. I'm Banjo. I'm Alex. Yeah, I'm Ray. I'm on Twitter as RDBAAA. I made a game called Blast Rush with my company Bipedal Dog. He's also on Twitter as Bipedal Dog. Uh, check out BlastRush.com to play a neat game for your computer or telephone. I think those are the big things. Of course, you can also give us money by buying a No More Whoppers shirt. Um, of course, with a Patreon, we could have made a new shirt, but we didn't. So, you know, wait for it, I guess. Who knows? Just give oh, us yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. That's, let's not be cynical about okay, this. Okay, okay, okay. Can I be a little bit cynical? No, not when we're talking about this. Okay. Fine. Then you be not cynical. Because, uh, well... Because folks are... I mean, a lot of folks are having a shitty time for many, many different reasons. Um, you know, not a lot of folks have money to drop for many different reasons. But So we, sure we appreciate don't. every dollar that comes into the Nomo O coffers, especially now with all the shit that's going on. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not really being cynical. But, yeah, everybody can do this at their own leisure. Right now, there are more worthwhile things you should be donating to. But um, yes. once you've done that, if you got a couple bucks left over... Old Ray and Alex could use a hand. Yes, but of course you're also right. There are way more 
worthwhile things to give your money to. And uh, we'll still be here. Yeah, right. We ain't going still anywhere. Yeah. We don't need to do live streams tomorrow. It'd be nice, but, you know, that's just nice. our own selfish desire. Yes. Yeah, otherwise, we do have some merchandise also on our Tumblr site. You can find the link there. Get a No More Offer shirt. Um, I think that's about it, Alex. I think you are correct. I'm still wrapping right. my brain trying to figure out what the fuck configure neighbors is, but it, I'll think um, about it uh, in the meantime. It's the No More Whoppers draw. But anyway, thanks for being in sport. Anytime. Everybody else, keep your nose clean. We'll see you next time. Gold subscribers, not the real ones this time, the fake ones. Still, stick around till after the show. It's Lotion Sunday and we're all slicked up. Come join us. Now, where do I have that drop? Where do I have just the... Where do I have that drop? (laughs) Thanks, you're hired. (laughs) I I should do the whole show as, like, text-to-speech voice. (laughs) Hello, Ray. Or just Siri, I guess. Oh, shit. Here's what I found for Adventure Island fan fiction. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand Normal Whoppers <laughs> <laughs>